okay? So the first thing I wanna tell you is, the best way to do this is take a piece of paper and realize there are four quadrants. There is the buyer side and there's a seller side. And hey, Cameron, go ahead and hit the uh, mute on your phone, please. In each side, you have a cubby hole for debits and a cubby hole for credits. Now, why did we put debits on top? This is what I was talking about a minute ago. Because on the buyer side, the debit is the largest number and people would rather see this than this. It doesn't really matter, but they just like the bigger number on top. So they put the buyer's debits on top. What do they do on the seller side? They actually flip them and put the credits on top and the debits on bottom. Once again, only because on a seller side, the actual debits are smaller, so they go on the bottom. So that would be the first thing I would do. Then before you start answering questions, I would take every one of your numbers and put them in a cubby hole. Every one of those things are going to go in one of those four cubby holes based on what we just talked about. Now, I'm not sure if I can actually do this or not. I had a separate document, but it apparently does not allow me Uh, I was hoping I could, yeah. All right, hopefully on your screen, you're seeing split screen, right? Two documents. Somebody tell me yes or no. Yes. Thank you. So what I would tend to do is to try and start by putting these all in one area so that we can start the math. So first of all, Let's start down the list and do this. $278,000 is a purchase price, right? That would go where? This is one of the few anomalies that we talked about or that we haven't talked about because it actually is both. It would go as a buyer's debit And it would also go as a seller's credit, right? Because the buyer owes that, that's the purchase price, and the seller is going to get it. So it goes as a seller's credit and a buyer's debit. The second one is called earnest money. And I told you before, earnest money is a credit to the buyer. It is money he put down when he wrote the offer. So it goes on the buyer's side in the credits lower section. The appraisal fee of $350. That is a buyer's debit they owe. It goes there. Actually, you know what? I don't even need to rewrite all this. I think I wrote it down. Can I write on this? Yeah, there it is. Let's do it that way. May seem a little bit better.
appraisal fee, loan balance, 113,576. That is the payoff. So that is a seller's debit right there. That is what the title company got on the mortgage reduction certificate back from the lender that says that amount of money. Title policy. Notice in this example, it says paid by the seller. So the seller pays the title policy, right? There it is, 550. The attorney fee. This example tells you that they split it, $450. Notice that that comes in right here, see it? It's 225 debit to both sides because it's split. So 225 debit to the buyer, a 225 debit to the seller. Deed recording, we specifically mentioned that, there it is. Deed recording, uh, termite report, $200, there it is. Taxes paid in full. All right, time out. We got to do a little. This is one that's going to be prorated. So here's our thing sellers, buyers, taxes paid in full of $1,950. What does paid in full mean? Is that a prepaid or an accrued? If they are already paid in full, prepaid. it would be a prepaid. So out of the gate, who's getting the credit for this? The seller. The seller is because it's prepaid at the beginning, which means the seller wrote the check, the seller's getting a credit. So we know out of the gate, whatever number, the seller is going to get the credit portion. Okay. Now. Here is a math trick that you guys need to learn. What is the closing date? Does it say on this example? August 31st. August 31st. How many days into the year are we on August 31st? Um, November, does 30 days have, uh, Oh, I can't remember that. That is going to be way hard. Can't you just, could you just ballpark it and be like 240 days? Around there. That's where we're going, Cameron. What's another way of looking at August the 31st? It's the eighth It's the month. last day of the month. It's the so you can just divide it by months instead. Exactly. Cameron hit it right on, so did Christina. It's the eighth month out of 12, right? It's the end of the eighth month out of 12. So theoretically over here, we do our little drawing thing. We could put, that's the eighth month out of 12. So now we know that the seller's going to get a credit and he's going to get a credit for four of the 12 months. And if you do four 12s times 1950, you will see that the seller gets a credit for $650. And Cameron, that's your ballpark. And that's the easy way to do this. And that's exactly how the test will do it. Cool. All right. So if the seller gets a credit for 650 though, because we prorated it, where does that come from? Well, notice right here, there's the debit to the buyer for 650. Termite report, 200, we put that, taxes paid in full. Loan amount, 75% loan to value, at a 6% interest. So how much is the loan amount? 
it is 75 percent of 280 you do the math it comes in right there at 205 300 but notice what i told you it is a credit on our side of the table it is a credit because literally at the closing i haven't signed the iou yet they gave me the money i'm going to use it to buy the house so it is a credit on the buyer side now when i sign the iou and the mortgage and i walk out of here now that will be a debit that i have to pay my monthly payment on but at the closing it is a credit to the buyer real estate commission seven percent well if you take seven percent times the two hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars and realize it would be a seller's debit it's right there nineteen thousand four hundred and sixty dollars now that nineteen thousand may be split but the reality is the seller's still paying the whole thing so you, it doesn't matter how it's split 50 50 90 10 in this particular quote section right here because all they're really caring about is the seller this is a buyer's and seller's uh, balancing all right so it shows up right there all right so the first question i'm going to ask you on the exam what is the real estate commission oh wait we already did that one boom the answer is done right there it is because we did it for the proration was the buyer's tax a credit or a debit well we already did that one too so there's number one right there number two is right there how much is the seller's proceeds okay so what i'm asking you now is how much is the seller going to walk away with so all we really need to do is add up their credits subtract their debits and that's how much they walk away with so when you get this closing disclosure you're going to get it three days before closing the first thing you're going to check is what real estate commission i mean no no not really cameron you've got to put that mute again you thank you you didn't have to pause you just had to mute it <laughs> i keep going back and forth between you and the uh paper away with one hundred and forty four thousand dollars all right so that was the answer to number three number four what's what's the seller's proceeds oh well, I just add up the seller's debits, subtract his credits, and that is how much the buyer needs to bring to the deal, $65,950. So here's the answer to number one. There's the answer to number two. There's the answer to number three. Where did I switch those around? That one's three. That one's four. And you really solve those four questions pretty quickly because we did all the heavy lifting up front by putting them all in the uh, cubicles. But you can see on questions number three and four, if I would have had a wrong number out right here somewhere and over here, that would have made that total wrong, which would have made that wrong and that total wrong which would have made that wrong. So literally it's not hard math. It's making sure that you get each one of those where they need to be in the right cubby hole so that you can add the totals up. All right. Are we pretty clear so far? Now, there's one other last thing I want to talk about. There is another fee 
that you will pay that is called prepaid interest. Prepaid interest. Let me see if I can get over here to this. So on prepaid interest, our loans pay interest in arrears. So August, September, October. When you pay in arrears and you pay your loan payment in October, you are paying the principal and interest for October, but you are paying the interest rate for the previous month. All right. So when I close on the 31st, I at closing have to pay the interest for that month because my house payment, quote unquote, in October will cover the interest in September and the principal and interest <clears throat> will cover the interest in September and the principal in October. I still have to pay the lender that. So the question that I ask you on the homework, as you can see, number five, is what is the prepaid interest? So we need to figure out how much is the prepaid interest. So first question is, how much is the interest paid this year? Well, the loan was 208.5 and what did I say? Seven per 6% interest. So you multiply that by 6% to get how much interest that you paid for this year. So 208.5, 208.5 times 0 0.06, you paid $12,510. But I wanna know by day, so in this example, I actually used um, 365 days because in the real world, that's what the title company would use. So if you divide that by 365 days, that tells me I'm paying $34 and 27 cents a day in interest, right? Everybody agree with that number. So how many days of interest do I owe in the month of August? One day because I closed on the 31st. I don't owe September's because it will be paid in my October house payment. So prepaid interest only counts from the day of closing to the end of that month in the month you close. In this particular example, when we closed on the 31st, I borrowed the money on the 31st, so I only owe them one day. If we would have closed on like the 21st, that would have been 10 days, right? Because now you got to include the 21st, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30. I would have owed 10 times 34.27 or $342.70. So prepaid interest is from the day of closing to the end of that month in the month you close. All right.
Thumbs up on that math. <laughs> Some of your thumbs up didn't look real energetic. Yeah, whatever. I'll take my thumb and jam it in your eyes, what I'm going to do. All right. Any questions on this chapter? No? All right. Remember, you should have a test. And the test will be tomorrow. If you're listening at home, it's whenever you want to do it. All right. Any questions before we turn this off?